welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Sharla. And I'm Christy. Today we are going to present to you seven very healthy freezer meals. When people think of freezer meals, they often think of casseroles, lasagnas, things that use cream of soups. And well, we sometimes do because, you know, there is a place for a tater tot casserole with some cream of mushroom soup in there. Absolutely um, there is. <laughs> kid friendly and good in a pinch. But freezer meals can also be super healthy and a great way for you to do meal planning, meal prep that, you know, makes your whole life healthier. Now, freezer meals with extra vegetables in them, as you're going to find today, it's going to make you have to do a little bit more prep work up ahead, but that's okay because on the day of cooking, you're going to find that these are super fast and easy and delicious to put together and you're gonna be so glad that you did the work up front. Because you're not really gonna have to make side dishes, everything is all included for most of these. So let's get started and get to the first recipe. This is our sheet pan cashew chicken. Oh, so good. It's so good and we just, did we discover it by accident? We, we just, we tried it out and like, it was one of those ones where we like, phoned each other <laughs> of, have you had the cashew chicken sheet pan yet? Because it is really, really delicious. And you had it first. Yep. And then I think like the next night we had ours and she was right. It was primo. So good. And you've got your veggies in there. We love sheet pan meals. We actually have a sheet pan cooking class. It's free. We're going to put the link in the description below. And for that, you can make a whole bunch of sheet pan meals and you get the free shopping list and prep list and printable labels. It's labels. All the good things. Um, so you might wanna check that out if sheet pan meals interest you. The reason sheet pan meals interest me is because there's less dishes. <laughs> it's true, we really feel like we can hear moms everywhere mm -hmm. clapping and, and cheering because there are less dishes to do. It really is, there really is less dishes because it's just on a sheet pan. It's that easy. So for this, you're actually going to need two large resealable freezer bags. In your first bag, you're gonna add some boneless skinless chicken breasts that you went ahead and prepped by cutting it into one inch cubes. Then you're gonna add some snow peas or sugar peas and your cashews, those are raw and unsalted. And then in the other bag, you're gonna add some yellow pepper that's chopped, red pepper that's chopped, orange pepper that's chopped, purple onion that's cut into chunks. Now you can see that already this is looking so healthy because it's got all those beautiful colors in there. And then in a bowl, you're gonna to mix together some soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, minced garlic. We like to use the garlic from a jar because it's already minced for us and it just saves some time. And some ginger. We like to use ginger from the squeezy tube because it tastes nice and fresh, but again, we save some time on having to grate it ourselves. So you're gonna mix all that together and you're gonna pour half of that into the chicken mixture and half into the vegetable mixture. You're gonna squish them to combine them and then you're going to remove the excess air, seal them, staple them together above the seal so that you don't have holes in the bag and then we're gonna freeze them. Now on the day that you go to cook these, you're gonna pour out the bag that has the veggies in it onto a baking sheet. Now usually I put parchment paper down on my baking sheet just to again, make those dishes a little easier. And then you're gonna bake this for 15 minutes. And then you're gonna add the chicken snow pea cashew mixture and toss it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. If you want, you can top this with some fresh chopped green onion and sesame seeds. This is so delicious. You can serve it on cauliflower rice or rice or just on its own because there is so much here. This is really, really good. I think the first time we made this one as a side, I don't really know what I was thinking. It was because we had just done a whole mega session and I wanted to try both. So for the side, I made this sriracha cauliflower and chickpea 
Oh, that's a sheet big pan. one. It was another sheet pan. And so it was like a lot of food. And then I did not need the rice. Right. Like there was definitely a lot of food, but the flavors went really nicely together. It was kind of like I had my own little Chinese food night, well, Asian food night. It was really, it was good. You can find the recipe for this in the description down below. This next recipe is our chunky bolognese sauce. We have been making this one for a long time. It's a great one to throw in your slow cooker on one of those busy days that you are just go, 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 and you need to have something ready. You can whip up some pasta to go with it and bam. And then you are done, kids are fed and... It's got veggies in it's here. It's got veggies right in it. So hear me out, in our bag we're gonna combine some ground beef that's already been browned. We're going to add in a diced onion, some chopped celery sticks, some chopped zucchini, some garlic, a little bit of bacon because bacon does make everything better. If you wanted to reduce your fat content, you maybe would want to omit the bacon, but you'll lose a bit of flavor. Or and that's use okay. turkey bacon. You can use turkey bacon, totally. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in a can of diced tomatoes and a couple of cans of tomato paste and some water right in there, along with some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. We're gonna mix it up in our bag and then we're gonna seal our bag up really nice and tight, getting rid of all of that excess air because air is what's gonna cause your freezer burn. So we want to make sure that this is gonna last a full three to six months in your freezer. On the day of cooking, like I said, you just wanna get this thawed, get it into your slow cooker on low four or five hours. And then when it is time to eat, you can serve this on regular pasta. You could do like your zucchini um, noodles. You can have those little noodle, noodle of fire sort of gadgets that you can have in your kitchen or spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to take a minute and I have to do a shout out. I'm wearing this shirt just to do a shout out. Um, Ryan McMahon, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he, I went to a backyard concert. Like how much fun is going to a backyard concert? That is really cool. Yeah. Uh, we went in October to our friend's house right around Thanksgiving and they had a living room concert oh, with Ryan. Canadian Thanksgiving. We're oh, Canadian. Yes. <laughs> October is our Thanksgiving. It's just a weekend. It's Good not correction. like a, you know, a lot of our viewers are American and we, we don't want to hear about it in the comments. And they're like, all. what? Thanksgiving's <laughs> not in October. Yeah, ours was in October and it, and it, again, like Christy said, I mean, you can go to a living room concert on Thanksgiving weekend because our Thanksgiving is much more scaled back. Yes. It's just a long weekend where you might have a nice dinner. Yeah. So we had gone to his concert there. Um, our friends hosted him. He is from Vancouver Island in Canada, BC. Um, and he, I don't know, he does these concerts. And so we saw him then and thought this was so fun to see like live music. And we knew hear a musician that's been a musician for a long time they have stories yes you told me we won't tell any of the stories but he no. has stories about brian adams i don't care where you are from you know who brian adams is and he this time that we saw him he was touring with burton cummings um burton cummings is a big deal in canada because he's from the guess who not the who the Guess Who, if you've never heard of them, they're an older band, like uh, late 70s, early 80s. Look them up, wonderful band. And so he had two nights off and chose to do this backyard concert on one of his nights. And so my husband and I went with some other friends of ours and um, Christy and her husband almost came, but it just didn't quite work out. It didn't out. work out. We'll get there, we're coming, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and I met his wife that night and I told her, I'm going to buy a shirt just so that I can wear it on camera and do a little shout out and tell you guys to go and look up his music because I'm a lyrics person and he's got some good lyrics. And for a little while, he was with a band called Lion Bear Fox. Right. And I had to really think that through. They have a song called Shine that has really good lyrics. and. And it was like, they gave us free CDs that night of Lion Bear Fox it, because they can't sell them now. Because <laughs> they're CDs. <laughs> well, also, I guess. Well, the band broke up, right? They're not carrying them in stores anymore. So he has some really good lyric songs. If you're somebody who likes to poke around and find some, you know, kind of not top 20 music, just a little undiscovered or less discovered music, then 
check that out just for something fun to do today. <laughs> That's right. That's good. Christy is huge into music and always goes to all these like amazing concerts. And so here I am with my little backyard concert, but this is like my speed. This is my style. And do you know what? For, for me, it really doesn't matter if it is a huge concert or if it is a backyard concert. Live music does something to me that I just, and, and I'm not a lyrics person. I'll be one of those people that years later, I'm like, really, that's what they were. <gasps> Justin Timberlake, sexy back, totally had something wrong in there. And my 16, 15 year old daughter was the one who schooled me on that. Mom, you're saying that wrong. I'm like, am I? <laughs> oh, I was. And so, you know, but I like the beat and I like, um, I like melody. I could care less about lyrics usually, unless they're like super offensive. But all that to say, I would, next time he comes, I am definitely going to go because I don't care. After COVID, when I hadn't been out anywhere, the first live music I saw was on the back of a trailer in a parade <laughs> in like our little town here. And I cried because I hadn't heard live music in so long. So go out and support your artists, go out to those concerts, live life. It's, uh, it's good to get out and go do that. Yes. Yeah. And so I know that had nothing to do with freezer meals, but I just, you know, we like to use our platform here to, <laughs> to encourage you mostly, but also if we can to give somebody else a little lift up, that's always nice too. That's right. This next recipe is pineapple teriyaki chicken. It ended up also being kind of a surprise hit. We do have other, yeah. you, you know, teriyaki chicken. How, how much more simple could it be? You throw a bottle in with, with the chicken and you're done. It isn't because this also has vegetables. This has the teriyaki sauce, but also extra sauce stuff. And you will see what I mean. We start out with our boneless, skinless chicken breast that's been cubed in our large freezer bag. We're going to add in teriyaki sauce, water, a little bit of brown sugar, not a lot, some garlic that's been minced, some carrots, pineapple chunks that have been drained, some red bell pepper that has been chopped, and a green pepper as well. We're going to add in water chestnuts. Now, here's what I love about water chestnuts. If you've never had them, this, this could happen. They keep their crunch. Mm -hmm. You can cook them for days and they still keep their crunch. They're a wonderful thing to have in this meal. We're gonna get that all in our freezer bag. We're gonna mix these together. We're gonna to seal it up and freeze it. On the day of cooking, we are going to thaw it and throw it in the slow cooker again, on low for three to four hours, or you can bake this in the oven, about 50 minutes. Make sure that those flavors are good and melded and it has such a lovely sauce that it goes beautifully over rice or you could probably do some rice noodles that would be good with this too. This Moroccan chickpea stew is a recipe that I adapted off of one we tried in a restaurant in Kamloops, BC. It is a nice hearty vegetarian meal. Into your large freezer bag, you're gonna put some chopped onion, minced garlic, again from that jar, some chickpeas that are rinsed and drained, uh, one or two sweet potatoes that are peeled and cubed. It just kind of depends on the size of your sweet potatoes. You know how you can get those ones that are giant? Well, then you might only need one, and if you've got the smaller ones, you use two. Then some diced tomatoes, Kalamata olives that are pitted. Those are the black Kalamata olives some vegetable broth, a little bit of brown sugar or honey, cumin, curry powder, paprika, cinnamon, turmeric, a little bit of cayenne, and salt and pepper. So it's all of those seasonings that really give this its flavor. On the day you go to cook this, you can do it low and slow in your crock pot or just heat it in a stovetop pot. Now, weirdly enough, at the restaurant that we ate this at, it was a breakfast and they had it with poached eggs on top. So if you wanted to have this for a brunch, you could, or even a dinner, you could serve some poached eggs on top and add in some extra protein. That is, I remember you coming back and telling me, <laughs> she came back and told like, Charlotte, she, you travel a lot, but she travels by restaurant, right? Like her <laughs> husband will That's plan true. excursions and we're gonna go here and the sun and the view and she's like, what are the restaurants like? Yeah. And and so often she will come back and tell me the tales of the new things she's <laughs> eaten and then she sits and she 
worries at it until she has wiggled <laughs> out the recipe and figured this out. And this one is totally a keeper. It's so good. It is good. It is good. And it, I've had it, I, I'm usually too lazy to make the poached eggs by the time I make it. Yeah. Which is silly because I've done nothing on the day of. I've opened a bag and put it in a crock pot. <laughs> But I don't make the poached eggs, but it would be good. It's good even without the poached eggs. Yeah. This next recipe is just super, super simple. I know some of these were more involved because you actually had to chop vegetables and things. Um, this is just salsa verde fish tacos. So into your large freezer bag, you're going to have some fillets of white fish. You can use cod, snapper, tilapia, bassa kind of whatever you like. And then some salt and pepper. You're gonna add in some salsa verde, which is not very spicy. So if you're concerned about spice, you should be okay. And then some crushed pineapple. Now this only uses half a cup of crushed pineapple. And so I suggest that you just make two of these at a time because it's super fast just to open two bags and make two at a time. And then you can use more of your crushed pineapple from the can. Um, and a little bit of minced garlic. That's it. You're gonna get the excess air out of that bag, you know, squish it to combine it, seal it, freeze it, and on the day you go to serve this, this cooks up super fast in a skillet, like you fry it up and it's done in minutes because it's fish, or you can bake it in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. So that quickly you can have dinner ready. You're gonna serve this in taco shells that can be um, hard shell tacos or uh, flour or corn tortillas and you want to have this with things like coleslaw or shredded cabbage um, green onions or purple onions you can do a mango or pineapple salsa there's a grocery store near us that actually just sells pre-made mango or pineapple salsa and that's a nice little cheat if I'm having this. Uh, I have made my own mango salsa too, but that's a nice little faster way. Um, some shredded carrots, and you can buy those pre-shredded already. Pico de gallo salsa, you know, jalapeno or serrano peppers, guacamole, sour cream, or crema, like whatever you want, whatever you like to have on your fish tacos. Go ahead. That's right. Oh, chipotle mayo is really good. And if you want to squeeze some fresh lime on there, it's mm -hmm. just nice and fresh. And this was so fast to make that on the day of, you don't really mind getting together those toppings because that only takes you a few minutes too. That's right. This next recipe is Thai chili chicken lettuce wraps. Yes, you heard that right. This is something that you can get at a restaurant near you and this will taste almost as good. Maybe it is. better. It is, it is, it is restaurant quality. So we start out with ground chicken, and let me tell you, you're gonna love this because I don't know about where you live, but in our area, that is a very frugal meat to buy. Mm -hmm. So it is good. We start it with our cooked ground chicken. We're going to add in garlic, minced garlic, um, diced onions, roasted cashews, mashed stick carrots, diced red peppers, fish sauce, and some soy sauce. We're gonna mix that all around together and seal that bag up. Yep. In a second bag, we're going to add in some sweet Thai chili sauce, a little squeeze of lime juice, and some sesame seeds. We're gonna mix those around and take the air out of that bag too and seal it up. And then we're gonna staple these bags together. Make sure that you staple above the seal or you're gonna have a hole in the bottom of the part of your bag and you're gonna have a mess. On the day of cooking, you do wanna thaw this. You get it into your pan and you get it out of your pan. This is gonna be fast. You're going to just heat it through until it is just nice and hot and then we are going to spoon it onto a lettuce leaf as if we are sitting in the restaurant and we're going to add the steam fried noodles and a little bit of maybe chopped cilantro and then that sauce. We're gonna spoon that right on. It is zippy and tangy and you're gonna eat it like that. It is delicious. We've done this for appetizer night. We've mm -hmm. done this as an entire meal. It is so good. And no one can believe it's a freezer meal. <laughs> It's kind of true. Right? I was asked by my brother-in-law if I could bring an appetizer to their house. They were hosting us and I brought this and they were just blown away. Yeah, it really is that good. So get out there and make it and have yourself some restaurant quality food at home. This recipe is our garden taco rice. It's a recipe that I adapted from this little tiny cookbook that I bought in the grocery aisle. I don't know, they don't have them as much anymore, but back when, like, I'm aging myself here, but 
20 plus years ago, as you were going through the checkout, there were these little, you little, know, tiny, little cookbooks. tiny cookbooks. It would be up there with the little book that had your horoscopes in it. Yes. And there would be a Reader's the Digest comics. and the Archie comics right up at the cashier. Yep. And so I found this recipe, well, a similar recipe, and started making it for my family. Wrote it on a recipe card because I didn't want to have to keep that whole little Look. cookbook for just one recipe. The rest of them were not good. Um, and then years and years later, when I was making it here and there, it occurred to me that we should really make this as a freezer meal. And so now we've figured out how to make it as a freezer meal and we've been making it ever since. And it's nice because it's got that sense of like comfort food um, and really hearty but it's got the veggies in there, so it's also, you know, you know that you're feeding your family healthy. And what's nice about this one is it's a complete meal. Yes. You don't have to make, you could make a side salad if you wanted to, but you don't have to make anything else in this. It's got your protein, it's got your starch, it's got your vegetables right in it. Um, and so it's a one and done. And it's a little more work on the day that you make it, but then on the day you serve it, you're just reheating it. And we like to slather it with hot sauce, but it's not because it doesn't have flavor. It's just because we're a we're a spicy family. <laughs> we're a hot sauce on everything family, so. And we never even think of that because we are not really, a, oh, my husband and I like spicy food. We are not automatic hot sauce people and we have never put hot sauce on it and we still think it's delicious. Right. Yeah. So it totally works either way. So into your large, oh, I forgot to mention. It's called Garden Taco Rice. And I think right now the recipe for it is only in the Freezer Meals 101 Club, which you can find the link for that below. But it'll eventually make its way onto our website and then you can find it there as well. In your large freezer bag, you're going to add some browned ground beef, some onion, taco seasoning, chili powder, some zucchini that is cubed or sliced thin, and then you're gonna add some cooked rice that has been cooked and cooled because you don't wanna add um, warm or hot ingredients into your freezer bag. That will cause condensation, it will warm up other things in your freezer, it'll warm your freezer up, and it can lead to freezer burn for all kinds of reasons, so we just always suggest that you have things cooled before you add them to your freezer bag. Then you're gonna add some corn, a can of green chilies, and diced tomatoes. You're gonna take all of the air out of your bag, you're gonna seal it, and then in a medium size, that's a quart size freezer bag, you're gonna add some grated cheddar cheese and staple that to your large bag above the seal. This will ensure that on the day you go to serve this, you have everything you need. All you need to do on the day that you cook it is thaw it and then pour it into a large skillet. Heat it on medium high until it's heated through. It really doesn't take long. It's like 10 minutes if, you, if it's fully thawed when you add it. You're gonna top it with the shredded cheese and just allow that cheese to melt before serving. It's so good. It is so good. This is a lot of variety. We have a really good mix of healthy meals right here. We sure do. And we just wanted to sort of showcase that Freezer meals can be fast, money-saving, time-saving, delicious, but also healthy. We're gonna put a link right there to some chicken freezer meals, and we hope you join us again. Thank you for watching today. Happy cooking. Bye.